Welcome to the On-Premise IT Podcast, the only podcast that dares to be both on topic and on location. My name is Tom Hollingsworth, and I'm a part of Gestalt IT and Tech Field Day. And each episode, we bring you the perspectives of a group of IT luminaries, real expert practitioners in their field on a variety of enterprise IT topics. I'd like to take a moment for our guests to introduce themselves before we jump into the premise for today's episode, starting with Ryan. I'm uh, Ryan Lambert. I've been in the network industry for about 20 years now. Um, looking forward to talking about the topic. All right, David. David Varnum, been in the industry for about 17 years. You can find me at overlay.net. I'm Dakota. I've been in the industry for only about four years. I'm the host of the Bearded IT Dad on YouTube. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Let's jump into the topic or premise for today's episode. A lot of people want to do jobs in the IT space. Some jobs are cooler than others. You may want to be a DevOps engineer. Perhaps you want to be one of those fancy people that works in the cloud. But there aren't a lot of dial-up networking engineers anymore. There aren't a whole lot of old-fashioned storage engineers. And one of the job titles that seems to be consigned to the trash bin of history is network engineering. Because the premise for this episode is no one wants to be a network engineer anymore. Now, I realize that I said that in front of a group of network engineers, so I'm sure the gloves are going to come off. But the more that I see in the IT space, thanks to a lot of technologies that are out there, no one wants to get their hands dirty learning how spanning tree works anymore. It's like, oh, well, the, the AI will fix that for me. Or, oh, that's so old school, we don't run spanning tree in the cloud. But yet we know how important those skills are. So what is it that's causing people to not want to develop into that network engineering role anymore? I think a lot of it's that shiny, shiny sticker syndrome. Like, <laughs> you know, these are the, the hot new thing. You know, you talk about DevOps and, and things like that. I, and people don't really seem to grasp, you know, I was born with a portmaster in my hand, basically. Um, people don't really seem to understand that, you know, network connects all of those things together. Um, you know, everything else has the limelight, but there doesn't really seem to be an appreciation anymore for the fundamentals of like, how does all that work? How, how does it get built? You know, how are we, you know, going to stream this podcast? Um, so, yeah, I think people have just over time, everything's been so abstracted. We've kind of lost sight of like, what are the building blocks that make this all possible? It's also, uh, I get it, right? It's super exciting to be um, coming like as a younger person coming into the industry and trying to figure out what is you want to do from a tech perspective? AI is really attractive. Software is really attractive. Um, you know, doing something in the cloud because, you know, you're being told these stories that no one's going to be doing on-prem anymore. You're going to be going to the cloud or you're already there. Um, people that have been in this for a while know that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, I think there is still the people that are like hobbyists or someone that's the way I got into networking was LAN parties which is a little bit different now, I guess. You know, that's not such a thing you do anymore. But I think people are still involved in like the hobby of, of connecting things and get excitement from that. There are still people that are interested in network engineering. Um, it's just becoming more of a niche and harder to find those people that really have that drive for it. You know, it's, it's arguably we did it to ourselves, you know. Um, we got the network working so good. You know, people just expect the internet to work. They expect the network to always be up. And since it's always working and we dedicate so much time to it, um, people just don't, they forget about it. They forget the network exists. And it's kind of lost this coolness. It's lost this sexiness. And the shift has moved to cybersecurity where we see all these cybersecurity boot camps and how you can make so much big money in cybersecurity. Meanwhile, how do you expect to learn cybersecurity and be good at it if you don't know how the network works? How can you protect the network if you don't understand how it actually functions at its core? And I feel like that part of the problem that we're running into is that the, a lot of the support functions that we've had to deal with for so long feel like they're being kind of pushed to the side. I mean, I got into networking because I was working on a help desk for Windows Gateway Windows PCs. And a lot of my phone calls stopped being about dead hardware and started being more about cable modems that didn't work. And you know, as someone who can rebuild a Winsock stack from a modem in their sleep in Windows 98, um, cable modems were like something I had no clue about. And so that was what started me down the path of getting my network plus and understanding what the difference between IP and IPX was. And then that kind of led to where I am today. 
but it was that desire to want to learn more and knowing that there are resources out there. I mean, I picked up so many Cisco press books that I feel like I should get a frequent customer card from them. But as part of that issue that there's no drive from people now to want to learn those fundamentals because either the information is already out there and it's just a Google search away, or there's no drive to get networking certifications anymore. Yeah, I, I think networking is such a, it's such a complex topic and um, kind of going back to, you know, things are being abstracted and to Dakota's point, the network runs so well today and things are so much more reliable than they were 15, 20 years ago. Um, a lot of people would say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need to know these fundamental things, but I think, you know, any of us who've done this for a while understand, you know, when, when things go wrong, things go wrong. And if you don't understand the fundamentals of how it's built, um, you don't understand how Spanier tree works. You don't understand how a routing protocol works. You're, you're kind of at the mercy of, I've got to call my vendor. And, you know, being in that position now with everything so connected the way that it is, um, that's really not an option for a lot of companies. I mean, losing connectivity can be devastating for companies. So, you know, s still getting in there, having that fundamental skill set and understanding it, um, you know, maybe we take it for granted when things are working, but when things really go wrong, you want to have those type of people. Um, yeah, I mean, from from an AI perspective, I feel like that's the, the big disruptor um, and attention span as well. So I don't think pe people aren't as interested in dedicating lots of the significant time necessary to go after some of these certifications that they don't really understand how that gets them into a future role or something like that, right? Like it's this obtuse, nebulous information versus something that is immediate like AI or cybersecurity. Um, of course, there's the side effect of not understanding the networks so that obviously still need for those people. Mm -hmm. But I can, you know, see that. Yeah, I mean, and also I think it comes back to the network, what the network engineer of today is doing is not the same as what they were doing even three years ago. Uh, I remember in high school, I took the Cisco CCNA certification, and I remember my instructor talking about protocols like network, wireless and networks, how unsecure they were, and they're never going to catch on. And look at the industry now. It's evolved, and us as humans do not like change. We do not like change, and I think a lot of the old school networking people did not want to evolve, and the new people... They, they didn't have the old people to inspire them to get into networking because all the people that are in networking didn't like the change. So there hasn't been this big publicity, you know, with like cybersecurity. You have like all these gamified platforms where you could play to learn cybersecurity skills where there's really not the same drive for networking. And do you think that that has something to do with the fact that you know, we talk about cybersecurity as kind of like an IT discipline, but it's a lot of things. There's skill sets and career paths that you can do that will never touch anything outside of your very narrow little trail. If you're an identity specialist, you may never understand how to do any kind of like, you know, malware removal or something like that. Whereas in networking, we kind of assume that everybody knows networking, all parts of it. Maybe you're not just a routing expert, but you also have to be a switching expert. You have to be a WAN expert. Whereas back in the day, those were specialized. Like if you had to turn up an OC3 circuit, not everybody knew how to do that because maybe they don't get access to that all the time. So could it be that because disciplines like cybersecurity just have so much more opportunity, people are like, well, it's easier for me to get in here and learn some things so that I can start my career as opposed to networking where it's like, oh no, you've got to learn all of this stuff before we ever let you touch anything. Yeah, I don't think getting into networking is I have to learn all of these things um, so much. Um, it, you know, kind of what Dakota was saying, um, I think there's been a lot of resistance to change over the years. And, you know, pe people were pretty disgruntled about the change. And, you know, I, I don't think it's, is, it, I don't think it's really as welcoming um, of a, a profession. So, you know, people aren't enthused about it. So even some of the people working in it aren't enthused about the way things are going. You have gripes about automation, gripes about AI. This is just the way of the world. This is the way things are moving. We either move with it or, you know, we're going to end up getting lost. Um, so I think there's just that, been that mentorship, that enthusiasm about the field um, that is making it difficult. You know, if, if the people in the field don't like the field, why are new people going to be attracted to it? I see people getting into networking 
um, because of what they're doing in other tech fields. Um, they get looped into a project, they're a cybersecurity professional, but they're focused on something that's network related. Mm -hmm. You know, they're focused on the SASE piece or something like that. Or they're in, they're in backgrounds in software development, but we need you for network automation. And I do see an interest once people start uh, peeling it back and seeing the complexity of networking from like a resiliency perspective, reliability perspective. And I am seeing more people get into networking via those other paths. But it's not like the first thing that you really think about like, oh, I'm going to be in tech. I want to be a network engineer. I feel like that excitement's not quite what it used to be. It's like an ancillary track. It's like, oh, we're going to teach you a useful skill. And then we're going to teach you to be a network engineer too. Yes. You know, it, arguably one, one perspective I have is all these different tracks and different parts of tech have been around all pretty much the same amount of time. But the big, main focus in the beginning was getting everything connected, everything, you know, communicating with each other. And cybersecurity was kind of a, a secondary piece to it. It wasn't as mainstream because we were just naive, I think. And then as we started learning about these vulnerabilities, cybersecurity started scaling and became, it's now the new hot topic thing, where networking kind of had its time where it was in the main spotlight. Now it's shift, the focus has shifted to networking. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but we have a lot of these kind of gatekeepers in the industry still, where we have these old cable dogs that don't want to share their knowledge because they're worried that they're going to get replaced. And it's really, I think, hurting the networking industry because we're not getting any new talent. The skill gap, the skill gap is growing rapidly, and the jobs aren't going away. The jobs are still out there. You go look on any of these job posting, and there's tons of jobs out there for networking, but just people, there no again, no one was incentivized to go into networking. They went to cybersecurity, and as a byproduct, they learned some networking because they went into cybersecurity. So there's jobs out there. But a lot of them involve doing things like configuring Amazon VPCs. It's like the skills that you have are still valid if you know how IP space works and you understand how things like segmentation work. But you're not configuring an on-premises VLAN anymore. You're configuring something in the cloud. Do you think that the shift of the way that networking is done in the major cloud providers is causing folks to not want to enter what was considered a traditional skill path? And they're more like, I am a net cloud DevOps sec person thingy and it's like well it's it's networking but i don't call it that because that's boring you know is that does that have an impact on people so i've done quite a bit of cloud work and i would say the networking fundamentals that i have still apply in the cloud um, you know you you want to do net devops that's great um, you still need to understand how to secure those VPCs. You, you know, you still need to understand ACLs, stateful, stateless, things like that. Um, you know, you need to understand BGP for your transit gateways. None of these things have gone away. The implementation details have changed. So fundamentally, I don't think the cloud changes it that much other than some of the tricks that, you know, we couldn't do in the past, we can't do in the cloud, and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, but all of the fundamental skills that I've built over the years, they're no less useful today than they were when I started. I'll say I, I did a, a one day networking session with a group of like 20 students that were all, um, you know, hired, brought on board and basically spend the first several months coming up to speed on cloud primarily. And but they also need to learn software development, all these different aspects. And so networking was one of the things. Um, none of them like networking. None of them understood, like they went through the cloud, got cloud certified, none of them understood BGP. And when I got into topics like at the CCNA level, just subnetting in general, Completely <laughs> forget about it, heads. forget about it, I'm not interested, don't, don't even have an interest in subnetting. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different protocols and all that stuff too, but even the fundamental piece of the subnetting I felt was a gap in some people that are kind of focused on the cloud. You know, and I, I'm seeing that too in the industry that people just, again, they don't want to learn those, you know, those core skills. But there is an argument to be made that people do want to become network engineers still, that, you know, there is people out there that want to become network engineers. But by definition, what we call network engineers, that style of person is dying. That 
those network engineering jobs are gone now because network engineering, like everything else, is evolving. And what is the nowadays network engineer is someone who is diverse in more than just networking. They're in, you know, they're in cyber, they're in cloud because they have to be mostly multifaceted. Um, you know, I think in not the far future, we're going to truly see the die of the formal network engineer that just does the networking because that person is now going to be multi-talented and wear multiple hats and learn, you know, cloud. They're going to learn cybersecurity and they're going to be, you know, more valuable to an organization. So let's say somebody wants to buck the trend. They want to be the the not cool kid and learn how these network things work. Maybe they they like modems or um, oh, what was the other one? Uh, you know, telcos. Maybe they, they want to punch down some 66 blocks or something like that. <laughs> but whatever the case may be, they want to learn this ancient black art of technology. How can people get involved and understand some of the basics behind network engineering, even if they don't want to go down that road right now? They're, they want to kind of round out their skill set. What can they do to, to figure out how to do it? Yeah, so, you know, we can, we can say network engineering is dying as much as we want, but one thing I will say about network engineering is the community is rich. Um, there are no shortage of resources in the community. Um, you know, Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, LinkedIn, places like that. There's a lot of guided learning uh, from vendors that people can use to get in. And I think starting out, if, if I were to go back and do it again today, knowing what I know, the guided learning is great. Uh, I think that helps you understand a lot of concepts and the resources available in the community, um, the podcasts, the Twitter conversations, uh, the blogs, you name it. Um, there's just so much available and so much interaction with people in the community. Um, I, I think sky's the limit for anybody that wants to learn. I think certification certification goals are still important. And if, um, if you want to start with cloud, that's fine. There's network specific cloud certifications that have a lot in there that you know will get you into a skill set that's highly sought after and interesting. And how you connect on-premises environments, which gets you further into understanding the architecture behind that, the resiliency. So I feel like certification paths, I know Cisco's not like the hotness like it used to be um, with- Spicy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Cisco, everyone. Cisco's, Cisco's cool, but uh, you know, it's, uh, there was like a time where there was like, that was everything. And that was, it was so exciting for networking. Um, it still is, it's still there, but it's been distributed amongst all these other areas. And so I think if there's people that are interested, maybe start cloud networking specifically, not just, you know, your regular associate. Um, and then, you know, go further into the, the on-prem. Well, I'm going to disagree with you because okay. I think the best certifications out there for people who want to get into networking are still Cisco certifications. There's a lot of other vendor certifications out there, but I still feel like Cisco sets the gold standard when it comes to certifications. And if you just want to dip your toe in while you're starting to round out your other skills, just go get your CCNA at least, you know, learn those core fundamentals. And yes, it is a vendor specific certification and there's other non vendor specific, but you go to talk to any hiring manager and they almost all know what a CCNA is, you know, and they all know what style of learning you've learned from it. Um, but going back to the best way, I think to really get into the industry, get your hands dirty. I think start fiddling around with networking equipment, go on eBay and buy some used, you know, Cisco gear or other gear out there and start running your home network through it because you're just going to start learning really quickly. You know, when you're now, you're, when your internet goes down and you have kids at home screaming, I can't watch, you know, Bluey on TV, that's going to be like real world pressure for you to figure out, okay, why did I, what did I do to break this network? Because that's how it's going to be in the real industry. And you're going to learn quickly, I think, by doing that, whether you like it or not, and if you want to pursue that as a career. I learned quickly, though, if you're traveling and you have your own custom network, you're gone, <laughs> then... Uh, that's when it's going to break, <laughs> when, when you're on break. the road. I'm just glad I'm not the only house where maintenance windows are tight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, even amongst network engineering experts, the, the impetus to want to do this as your career, if you're just starting out, feels a little dark and dismal. But 
When you think about all of the other people in other industries, in other professions that are kind of invisible, thankless, your, your average plumber, for example, um, you would say that they have a very important skill set and they're very good at what they do. Yeah, they're never going to be driving a Ferrari, but most of the time they don't have to because it turns out the world is always going to need plumbers. And yes, the cloud is always going to need network plumbers. As long as data has to move from one location to the other, no matter how we encapsulate it, no matter how we wrap it up, we're still using the basics of networking to move those things back and forth. We, networking has survived ArcNet, it survived Token Ring, it survived IPX, SPX, and honestly, it survived IPv4. And it's going to continue to do that. And as we change with it, it's an exciting way for us to understand more about how the world works. And honestly, it's a great way for us to remind the other people who seem to have forgotten that we still need to be around to make sure everything works. That'll just about do it for this episode of the On-Premise IT Podcast. I want to thank our guests for joining us, and I want to thank you for listening in. If you'd like to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode, please feel free to do so. You can find us on our YouTube channel. You can read the show notes and get an overview of our guests on our website. And you can also listen to your favorite podcast application of choice. And if you do that, leave us a rating and a review so people know what we're all about here because we do stick to the premise. And... We look forward to seeing our viewership and listenership grow over the years. We will be back with another great episode in just a couple of weeks. So until then, take care and uh, learn a little networking, will you?